Hi people, me again obviously as always, Moreno Reagan Burke. Yeah, this is going to be a video on another neutral subject. Uh, in the wake of me recording that astrological video of um, France versus its former uh, French colonies in Africa, which you can find either linked in the description of this video or at the end screen if you haven't seen it already. Most of you that, will, that are watching this video, so most people that follow me, all if not most of you guys, um, you... You've already watched that video, so I'm going to discuss, as the header says, why, generally speaking, coup d'etats fail. Coup d'etat is French, obviously. It simply means a coup, as in um, a country um, ousting its original ruler from power and um, metaphorically libera liberating itself, and in some cases, literally liberating itself from um, from that ruler, which was, generally speaking, or is, generally speaking, of an oppressive nature. That's loosely put the definition of a coup. It simply stands for um, state-based um, autonomy or independence from a ruling body that is, again, classically within mankind's history of a thingy nature, of an oppressive nature, or has been. Think of, um, again, any third world country that used to belong to a European country and uh, and the way that things go, the way that all of us remember in history books and whatnot, as well as overall, okay, uh, France and all the um, colonies they have, uh, Spain and Latin America, it just goes on, you know. We all in school learned about uh, Simon Bolivar in Spanish, Simon Bolivar, you know, he was seen as the liberator or in Spanish, El Libertador. Uh, of Latin America, so Spanish-speaking America, and they essentially, and he essentially released, um, he essentially released or relieved Latin America from the um, the colonial grip that Spain had on it, Imperial Spain, um, and it just goes on and on and on. Okay, um, the, up, yeah, up to a certain extent, obviously, it also applies to first world countries. Not just third world countries like the US and Canada, obviously they stand from England, Great Britain, and they did the same thing. So that's the, the definition of a coup d'etat. But I'm going to discuss, like I said, why, just like the header says, why coup d'etats, generally speaking, fail, um, especially applicable to third world countries, because when you exclude the US and Canada, um, other countries that have essentially committed coup d'etats that used to belong to European countries and they essentially became independent uh, through military action primarily. So not peacefully just saying, hey, we want to be independent, okay, do you agree or do you not agree, etc, etc. No, 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 no peaceful, no peace, okay, no peace by no peaceful means as in, you know, the military of um, people that lived in that country uh, rebel, uh, revolted and rebelled and they they either chased out or deposed the, the, the government from that European country that was positioned or stationed or that was placed like a puppet government in their own country or similar, okay? So just playing through military, by military means or through military action. Um, generally speaking, these countries fail um, and they become bluntly put, they turn into shithole countries, but that's not just due to that, okay? Obviously, it's also due to the mentality and all the other factors that make up what all, if not most, of world countries look like. Okay, it's the, the mentality of the population that is largely responsible for these countries being dilapidated and unorganized and, and unstructured and whatnot. Like I said, purely from the con from the prospect of a coup, from from a, a founding prospect. Okay, if you exclude the mentality of the population, why is it that countries that commit to the aforementioned coup d'etats in that model, in that context, usually these countries, excluding what I said regarding mentality of the population, why is it that it essentially almost spells ruin for these countries and that these countries arguably are way worse off than they were um, than they were before um, they released themselves from colonial rule, so to speak? Honestly, the reason is plain and simply due to the lack of intellectual and administrative capabilities from the the committers of said coup d'etat and the de facto rulers essentially. So simple example, you have a country, any like third world shithole, and 
we're just gonna rewind like a hundred years ago or 75 years ago, you name it. Country is being exploited heavily by a European power, exploited in a metaphorical sense. The country is being heavily made use of, a lot of resources are extracted, blah, 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 okay? The country that rules over it decides what happens, when it happens, how it happens, to what extent it happens, blah, 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 okay? All of a sudden, you know, you have like a freedom fighter or a wannabe freedom fighter rises up and he's like, okay, I'm fed up with us being oppressed, I'm fed up with us being slaves, okay, I'm going to get a group of guys together, we're going to rebel, we're going to hold secret meetings, most of the population stands behind us because, again, as ignorant as they are, they're like, oh, finally someone that will liberate us from our oppressor, finally. Uh-huh. Okay. Depose the government through military actions. Kakak. Go. Okay. We're going to put you on a plane, ship you back to your country, don't come back. And just to show you guys that we're serious, we're going to execute like 10 of you guys. Bam, 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 bam. That's generally speaking the recipe of every coup that he taught, uh, more or less, in a, at least in the past couple of hundred years, I want to say. That's how things have gone. Okay, no problem. But similar to a video I did on in terms of how to be organized when moving, this applies at a nationwide level. The thing is that the, the people that usually do this, the military leaders, Bluntly put, they're beyond fucking stupid because they lack the intellectual and administrative capacity to be able to actually govern an entire country. Because the problems you're going to run into when you do stuff like that, it's like me saying, okay, um, I need to go into, I need to head into town. I can't, um, I can't call a cab at the moment. No cab company is picking up for some reason. I'll just walk five miles into town, like five miles from my house to town. And that's it. I don't plan out what I'm going to do for the rest. What the fuck am I going to do for the remaining 50 miles? That's the logic that these guys use. They're like, oh, okay, we're fed up with being oppressed. We're going to liberate ourselves through military means, obviously, because they won't go peacefully. Okay, you do so, the population is happy. Yay, thank you for liberating us. Okay, and now what do you do? And that's when the head scratching begins. Um, I, 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 I don't know, exactly, you don't fucking know. Common sense tells you that you need to go over every single thing. Are you capable of, as an administration, or so by administration I mean you and the group of guys that you got together, are you capable of, of essentially running a country? What do you know about the economy? What do you know about the entire social economical structure of the country, the outline, everything? Don't be so stupid to bite the hand that feeds you. You can hate the hand that feeds you, but biting the same hand that fed you, obviously it's gonna make you starve to death when you bite the hand and the hand retracts itself. I'm okay, no more food for you. The problem is that most of these countries, they rely heavily on the countries that ruled over them or the country that ruled over them for resources, most of them up to present day even, by resources, I mean the stuff that you use to go by, to get by in daily life. Things that people take for granted. Anything from toothpaste, to toilet paper, to soap, to dishwashing liquid. The most basic of things. Almost all of it has to be imported. Okay? All of it has to be imported. You give your colonial ruler the finger. Okay, no problem. You're fed up with his attitude or her attitude, whatever. Okay, no problem. What are you going to do then? What are you going to do with all the stuff that, that you imported from them? They're not going to help you out anymore. You can see how stupid that is, right? That you need to literally see to it that all of your bases are covered, that you can handle yourself. As in, hey, what are you going to do? So yeah, that's essentially the problem. And that's why you're saying that most countries, like I said, they, the, 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 the coup d'etat uh, committers, they don't have the intellectual capacity to, to literally govern, to just govern, period. It's quite similar to, to, for example, you deciding that you're going to live on your own, you're like 18 years old, you live with your parents, but you, do not, you don't have the, the knowledge, and even if you did have the knowledge, the actual intellectual capacity to, to be able to live on your own, to be fully independent. You relied on mommy and daddy for a roof over your head, for food on the table, for... Everything, internet, 
um, anything and everything you can think of. Um, everything that you use around the house, even stuff that you take for granted, uh, for TV, for electricity, for water. And, you say, and, and in exchange, your parents are like bossy, for example. Your parents are like, you live under my house, you abide by my rules, period. You don't like it, there's the door. And at some point, you get fed up with it as a rebellious teenager. You're like, fuck you, I'm 18, I'm legally an adult. Fuck you, mom, fuck you, dad. I'm going to live on my own. <laughs> okay. What are you going to do then? Now you're living on your own. <laughs> you don't know what to do. Okay, I... I um, you're standing alongside the road. I need to, um, what am I going to do? I need to rent an apartment or a house or something. See what I mean? You don't know anything on what to do. Um, 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 okay, let me see. Let me try to buy a magazine, a, a classifieds magazine. Oh, look, apartment for rent. Um, um, shit, I can't afford it. The problems begin. You, fi you finally find an apartment that you can afford. Oh crap, this apartment is way across town. Um, let me just take a cab. Okay, shit. It turns out that if I have to take a cab every single day, I, I won't be able to afford to live here because it's gonna cost too much to commute from and to my apartment. You go into the apartment. Oh crap, I need to decorate it. Um, how do I get Wi-Fi? Okay, uh, I didn't know that I have to pay uh, electricity, so uh, the water and the, the power and the water bill separately. Where do I do that? Where is the Department of Power and Water? All those problems will, will literally <laughs> will fall on you like a sledgehammer and you're going to be in trouble. See what I mean? That's the whole point. It's the same thing. It, the same concept applies at a nationwide level. You think you're going to liberate your so-called country from any so-called oppressor? Okay, no problem. You need to see to it that your country is self-sufficient. You need to see to it that everything has been covered, even putting a backup plan in the, in the place. If I, for example, was in the shoes of one of these so-called so freedom fighters, I'm like, okay. For example, simple example, I live in some shitty third world country that belongs to... Again, I'm just giving an example here. Let me see that belong to Russia. No offense to Russians, I'm simply just giving an example. Let's just say that I lived in South Africa and South Africa belonged to the Russians. <laughs> just an example. Um, and Russia oppresses us. La, 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 la. Okay, I've had enough of it. I'm like, okay, I've had enough of these Russians. Okay, go back to your own country. You're not welcome here anymore. La, 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 la. Okay, close up all the borders. What do you need to do? Okay, you think it your, you liberated your people. Everyone is like, yay, okay. Now what are you gonna do? Before you did all of that, you needed to plan everything well in advance, like a year at least in advance. All the while being as discreet as possible to the point where no one finds out, obviously, because you don't want the Russians to find out what you're, find out what you're doing. You're like, okay, provided that everything goes well, guys. How are we going to run the country? Okay, Russia, the, everything we use, food, groceries, everything comes from them. Utilities, everything comes from them. So we need to establish deals with other trade partners before we do this. All the while being as discreet as possible, or we need to have those trade deals ready to go. And we need to have a backup plan in place in case of one of our partners chickens out. We need to do this, we need to do that. We need to go over everything, every single thing. Okay, what are we going to do when it comes to this? What are we going to do when it comes to that? Okay, how are we going to reform and restructure everything, infrastructure-wise? What are we going to do about the local ISP, so the local internet service provider? This provider has no um, thingy. This provider has no... This provider... If we shut them, we have to shut them down because they belong to them. They belong to the Russians, so we need to shut it down. And the story, how are we going to do then? What are we going to do then? Okay, what, what other country can we rely on? How are we going to gain access to Europe? Because the Russians, you better believe that they're going to like tell other European countries to not even remotely come close to helping us. So for now, Europe is not an option. Let's just focus purely on what we can do within our direct vicinity. You need to plan everything out well. Every aspect of society, if not most aspects, need to be covered. Okay, guys, what are you going to do for a source of income? Okay, 
So you literally need to take the entire business model that your so-called country run ran on with your so-called oppressor being present. You need to make like a, a seamless, a smooth transition, a, a, pick, a near perfect transition. Okay. Just like I explained, that's the only way that in which such a, a plan will succeed. That's the only way in which a coup d'etat will be successful. Again, I refer back to my moving example. You need to literally take everything that you do, the way you live, everything that you do to get by, everything that makes up day-to-day -day life for you, as short term as well as long term. And when you're going to move, you need to literally export all of that, <laughs> literally every single aspect of that. Okay, the same way that you, for example, you use one browser on your computer or any device, you use Firefox or Safari or Google Chrome. You're a Google Chrome user and you say, okay, I've had enough of Google Chrome, I'm going to move to Firefox. That's what the export, br export bookmarks and export search, browser export system is all about because these browsers have that option. People that obviously, you don't have to be a geek a tech geek, but people that use browsers know what I'm talking about. That's what all of that is about. You want to go to, everyone has had that. Everyone that came to this decision had that. And even the developers had that. That's why they came up with it. They were like, hey, listen, it's going to be too much of a hassle. People are possibly going to migrate from one browser to another, from our competitor to us, without some kind of seamless transition going. So we need to create like an import browser settings and bookmarks and everything and history, you know, from, from, uh, we need to create something, we need to create a plan, a tool, a developing tool that makes it so that people can do so, that it's going to be literally just like moving from plan A, to, from, just going to be moving from one model to another, it's the same thing, okay, that's why people can do it easily, they want to use Firefox, okay, using Firefox, import history, import everything from Chrome, Chrome even has an export history, as in, hey, listen, you don't want to work with us anymore? No problem. We can export everything to the thingy that you're used to. Okay, even telecommunication providers have that. You can, well, not all of them, but some of them, where you can literally just export your number or you can have your number ported to another network provider. You don't have to give up your phone number as a, hey, I don't want to work with this um, provider anymore, so I'm, you know, I, I want to retain my phone number. I've had it for the past 10 years. Every, every contact of mine has my phone number. You can port your number, okay? You can transfer your number to another provider. A good deal of providers do have that option for the sake of stability, obviously. The same thing applies at a global level, okay? That's the only way in which a coup, a coup d'etat, the only imaginable way in which a coup d'etat has, a, has, has a, an as high a success rate as possible. If you don't do that and you're a coup d'etat committer, to put it that way, then you're going to get into trouble. And you again, history has shown that time after time. What happens to all of these shithole countries? Immediately all hell breaks loose because guess what? A bunch of dumb imbeciles said that they're going to liberate their people from, from colonial oppression and they don't take all the things I said into account. And as a result, you just have like, oh, okay, no, what do we do now? Okay, they're gone, what do we do? Exactly. We relied on them for bread, shit, no more bread, shit, no more, no more milk, no more nothing. And as a result, almost all of these countries have had the same issues. The government or, yeah, the military government or military has to, the military junta or junta, junta, has to, starts rationing stuff as an okay, impose curfew, no one is allowed to come on the street. Yeah, you have to stand in line for basic necessities like toilet paper, bread, milk, stuff like that. It, it just leads to utter it just leads to destabilization and utter destruction of um, your so-called country, and arguably you will be worse off, way worse off than you were before. So you really need to plan things out well, and uh, that's also one of the main reasons for why these countries nowadays are shitholes. It's not just the mentality of the population; they're shitholes. Okay, these countries, honestly as a whole are founded upon worthlessness. They're not founded upon, they don't have a solid foundation. They're founded upon bluntly put shit, <laughs> that's all. 
They have a shit nation, not a foundation. That's it, guys. Until next time. Bye.